So let's just start here. Would you bet that the Vikings make a trade before the deadline? No. I don't, I don't think, think so either. I, I, a, I think cap-wise it wouldn't make a ton of sense offloading someone at this point um, in the year. And also it's – if we're truly in competitive mode, like it's kind of like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, we don't have a glaring need, in my opinion. It's like we have to go trade for this position in order to make the playoff run. You know, all the stuff that like – I mean, like the Jets, for example, they're like, we lost Brees Hall. We have to find a quarter or a running back. So they go get James Robinson. You know, Carolina is basically like, ah, fire sale. And they're just sending off Christian McCaffrey. I think the Vikings are kind of looking at this roster like there's no glaring needs. Let's keep our draft picks. Let's keep our players. And let's reassess at the end of the year. I think that that is the right approach. If they were to mess with the salary cap, trade for a wide receiver, a pass rusher, a something, a nickel corner, uh, I'd support it. I would say, I would say because of the nature of this season and how bizarre it is and how the red carpet has just been rolled out for you to be a real contender. And the fact that you do have significant weaknesses across the roster, I think it's very difficult to add a player mid season and have that player really help you. But at the same time, you might as well go for it because you didn't treat almost anything else. Like it was a long-term play. So why not? I mean, you already screwed your cap for next year for the most part. Go, I mean, go look at overthecap.com. They're like over the cap right now <laughs> for Bad. next year. It's not a great situation. And like, oh, yeah, they'll just do this, that, and the other thing. Oh, as they've been doing all the time and getting in trouble doing it. That's why they have Kyle Rudolph's dead cap being like $8 million right now. Is that what you mean? Is that why Anthony Barr is being paid like $7 bucks not to play here? So you've been doing that anyway. You're not in a good situation for next year. If they just said, you know what, it's it's KOC time, let's go. This And it might be the last year of Cousins being here. You also want to send the message to Justin Jefferson, we're for real, we're trying to win, which is why Kwesi never should have used the words competitive rebuild. That was a huge mistake, I think. Like, go all in, show everybody that you're here to win and that uh, you're, you're making that commitment. I, I wouldn't be against it. I don't think it's a tactical great move to do. But I think from what it says about where they stand and the fact that they are just in line to win this division, I'm okay with it. Go for it. Yeah, as long as they don't get – as long as they don't overbuy. You know, I think that's something that always happens towards the trade deadline is teams panic a little bit and then they get taken to the cleaners by the other team of like, oh, well, we want this guy and this draft pick or this and that. Like, I think as long as you don't overbuy, like, sure, you can go get a sixth round or a seventh round trade. But, like, don't start getting into day one, day two picks – to get rid of guys in the middle of the season. Here's what I don't understand. So the Jaguars trade a running back. Who's like pretty good. I think mm-hmm. he could play for a sixth round pick Christian McCaffrey based on name recognition, I guess yeah. ends up getting a absolute haul. I mean, you know what, you know what the thing is here's here, you want to be the team at the poker table that spots the mark. San Francisco is the mark. I mean, they just, they've done a lot of good things there, but they are the mark with stuff like this. And Carolina just found it. They're like, oh yeah, okay. Don't you need another running back? Like your name is Shanahan. You need another running back, right? I mean, I have no idea what they were thinking in trading that much for Christian McCaffrey. If it was like a third round pick, I'd be like, oh yeah, go for it. Why not? Second, third, fourth. What are you doing? I I don't understand that at all. I think old Mike Shanahan called in. He was like, I had, I had his dad. I had his, dad. <laughs> yeah. his dad was great you need him you need him Kyle you need him go get him do whatever it takes you go get him and they just sold the farm for a guy like and I and you tell me if you weren't thinking this too I'm watching Christian McCaffrey on Sunday and I'm like he's gonna get hurt like they're gonna have him here for four days like and every time he got hit I was like oh is he gonna get up because like he's just that he's been injury prone the last few years and I'm not saying that in a bad way but it's like if they sell the farm for this dude and he's here for four days and rolls an ankle or twists an ankle, like that's the problem of why I feel like they gave up too much. Not because he's not a fantastic caliber player and has the chance to be a game changing player. It's the longevity and his, his ability to play all 17 games has just not been there. And to give up what you gave up, you're talking multiple good players. You can find early in the draft for a guy that has just been kind of eh, the last couple of years. I did get a few tweets. Should the Vikings shop Delvin Cook? I'm like, let's not galaxy brain this yeah, now. Easy, let's, easy. Let, let's. I mean, I get where you're coming from, but not when you're five and one. Like, yes. No. If they were three and three, I would say, oh yeah. But five and one, no, you can't do that. 